everybody and welcome to Flavors of Israel. I'm your host Natalie and today's going to be a great day once again because we are with our favorite chef, Chef ZC. She's been whipping up some delicious delicacies for us from the past few weeks. But easy. Yeah, from the past few episodes. And today she's going to make something interesting for us. I see some chicken, garlic and a bunch of fresh veggies. So why don't you, before you start, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. We all want to hear it. They all want to hear it too. What I do is I create really easy, healthy, flavorful meals for clients as a private chef, but I also run a website, which is chefzcrecipes.com, which allows you to cook like me, which is easy, but also with the most fresh and beautiful ingredients out there. Okay, that all sounds amazing. Superb. Superb. So what is our first recipe of the day? So what we're doing today is something really fun, obvi obviously. And cooking is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, we're doing um, pargio, which is dark meat, boneless, skinless chicken, thighs and legs, okay. to be as specific as possible. Um, and we're putting some really colorful, fun things with them. Um, as you know, I, I love limes. Like I, yes. I really want them in everything, but I hold back because you need, you need a diversity in life. Um, but this recipe, I'm happy to say, has limes in it and some fresh herbs, and we're gonna get started. Okay. So the first thing we're doing is we have our oven on hot, and we are going to roast this garlic and turn it into garlic confit, mm. which means that it's really cooking in its own deliciousness. So, so I no slicing, no cutting, just nothing. putting them in whole. The okay. best thing ever if you're making this recipe at home is to buy already peeled garlic if you can find it. Um, and to make a lot of this so that you have it in your fridge because you'll find that you'll put it in everything. So we're just gonna cover it in olive oil, which doesn't mean that you're gonna be eating all of that oil. It means that you can take it out and then use the oil for a salad dressing or to put on something, so we're covering it in oil to cook it, but we're not consuming all of this oil. Just enough to cover the garlic. Then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of Ceylon, or you could use honey, or maple syrup, and some salt. So you mix it right up, and then we're gonna bake it and it comes out crunchy and soft and divine. So I'm getting this, this is an oven proof bowl, mm -hmm. but be warned that anything that you do this in, the bowl will get really sticky and hard to clean. So soak it right when you're done. Okay. So it's going in for how long? Uh, about half an hour. Okay. Wow. As you can see, the Looks garlic great. Is amazing. You can do this six days in advance, literally. You could just do this, make a bunch of it, and then add it to all the recipes. Because you'll see how quick this recipe is, and it's a shame to have to wait half an hour mm -hmm. because we need this for the next step. Now we're gonna take a little bit of the oil that was cooked with the garlic because it tastes amazing, and we're gonna add it to our hot pan. We're gonna get that hot. We're gonna add our pargiot not to overlap too much, and then we're gonna season with salt. I'm adding the chicken to the pan, and then we're gonna season it. And this way, you don't have to get it all dirty. What are you seasoning the chicken with? Just, Just salt. Just salt? Okay. And I, on purpose, don't do salt and pepper, because we're using a little bit of a chili pepper. And that adds the pepper flavor as a and and a little bit of heat if you wanted to, or just the flavor. Mm -hmm. This is a purple asparagus, and you don't trim the edge; you break it because then you know exactly where it's going to be flavorful and where it's going to be hard to eat. It tells you. You don't tell it. So this one's already. So the rest are done. Uh -huh. Sorry. You did I all the work. I know you beforehand. wanted to. Now I'm going to cut them in half and prepare the rest of our ingredients, which is half a chili pepper. I think we see a theme going on here with ZC's red chili pepper. Some chefs use salt and pepper, and I use salt and chili pepper. <laughs> Just tastes better. 
It doesn't mean it's spicy. Mm -hmm. And date. I'm turning it over. Now it's all beautiful and browned on one side. Has that nice golden crust. Golden glow. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to turn each one over. You could also take like a wooden spoon and uh, just mix it if you're doing a bigger portion than I am. And now I'm gonna add this fun stuff with a little bit of the oil, but not all of it. I'm gonna add my asparagus, the dates, and the chili pepper. and let it cook for about five more minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut my, slice my fresh apricot. And if you can't find this, you can use a nectarine, a peach, a mango, or just leave it out. You know, I never thought to add so many fruits to my dishes. It really brought a new light to me. It adds color and yeah, flavor. And sweetness. And sweetness. A lot of people, a lot of my clients like very sweet food. Mm -hmm. So I try and show them that you can have food that's on the sweeter side, but by using not sugar. Right. <laughs> so I'm just giving it a quick mix. How long does this have to be frying for? Five more, five minutes, five to eight minutes per side, depending on how big your chicken pieces are. And also you have to wait till the asparagus gets a little soft. I like yeah. the asparagus crunchy, mm -hmm. but like just cooked. Yeah. So really you're worried about, you have to worry about the chicken and the asparagus, even if it's like cooked for a minute, it will be delicious. I'm gonna take the fresh thyme off the stem and add it just here, so when we add it all together, it's ready. The best. The best for last. These are little, so I'm gonna add two of them. So now, we get to add in our apricots and fresh thyme. Once it's off the fire, you mix it all around. And plate it. We add a little salt to taste and the lime juice. Here you go, Zeus. Thanks, darling. Let's dig in. I absolutely love dates, so I'm happy you put that in. Mm. Wow. Extremely flavorful. So many different flavors. <laughs> ah, CC, this is my favorite day, coming here to cook with you, because I know I'll be happy mm -hmm. and full. Alright guys, stick around for another episode of Flavors of Israel with myself and Chef ZC. and welcome to Flavors of Israel. I'm Natalie and today's gonna be a great day because we have Chef Zizi with us who's gonna whip up for us some delicious dishes. Very easy to make. Um, okay, so what do we have here? As you know, I like for, uh, to teach people not to be afraid of fish. Mm -hmm. And most people buy salmon and sometimes tilapia and they end there. Or tuna fish. Or gefilte fish. But we're, <laughs> we're gonna do a red snapper today. And this is a beautiful red snapper and it's a very soft, buttery fish. Um, and we're gonna make it all with fresh ingredients, obviously, and this is gonna be a very light, summery dish that we can make in six minutes. So today we're not gonna be afraid to get our hands dirty with the fish. 
Are you afraid? Because you'll be doing all the <laughs> Okay. So in here, I've already zested garlic, ginger, and I've chopped a red chili pepper. Okay, some of my favorite ingredients, as you know. Now, we're going to squeeze in two lemons, add some olive oil and salt. I like to squeeze the lemon instead of using a lemon squeezer because there's less cleanup, but you always have to catch the seeds. We're going to add olive oil and salt. That's a generous amount of olive oil. Because there's a lot of lemon juice in there. Now, we're going to mix it together. And here's what we're going to do next. We're going to add a dash of olive oil to our pan. We're going to get it nice and hot. We're going to season our fish with salt. We're going to put it face side down. So how long does this have to go in the pan for? It's it goes three minutes per side, but after a minute and a half, we're going to add half of this. While that's cooking, we're going to do the rest, which is slicing our peaches. This is called watercress, and it's really delicious and like a simple, sweet flavor, and I'm going to use it as part of the topping, and mint. So right before we turn it over, we'll add salt to this side, because we only added it to the other side. Now I'm going to flip it. Carefully. And then we'll add half of this. And it's gonna, you'll see. Natalie, we have just the little bit rest of the sauce in here. And we're going to add all this to it. It's so like fragile. So buttery. So it's okay if it falls apart because it is really buttery. And then you know it's delicious. It all goes in your stomach anyway. Exactly. So now we put our beautiful topping. This also took about a few minutes to prepare and to make. So guys, stick around for another episode of Flavors of Israel with Chef Cece and myself. <laughs> we are back once again at Natalie Gleitman's Kitchen of Natalie's Cuisine, where she's going to be teaching us today how to make coconut granola. What's so happy first you came back. Thank you. Me too. And we're going to make coconut granola. And what I really love about this or making granola in general is that there is really no need to buy granola in the store. They sell it for a premium price. They add a lot of sugar. They add additives. 
It has like so many unnecessary things to what you actually need as the essence of granola. Right. And you can use this for topping as a yogurt, for with you can eat it like as a cereal, like right. with milk or with milk, coconut whatever milk, you want. whatever you like. Exactly. It's, or you can even stuff like an apple with it, put it in the oven, and you have like stuffed apple with granola. Wow. So there are so many things you can do with this, and I'm really against like buying granola in a shop because you, you will see, yeah, and you will see how easy it is to make it. Plus, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's lactose-free, it's histamine-free, so it Again, should be something for anybody. No excuses, people. Now you can make your own granola. <laughs> exactly. You don't need to buy it in the store. You want yogurt and granola, you make it on your own. Exactly. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 400 grams. And what's also of um, oats. So what's amazing is that you only have to make it once and then you cover it for like weeks in granola. Wow. Because you make a lot at the same time. So 400 grams of oats. Yeah. Then we're gonna add a one tablespoon of melted coconut oil. Then we're gonna add 150 milliliter of coconut milk. And then we're gonna add like two to three tablespoons of honey for as the glue to keep everything together and to make it like really chunky. Now we're gonna mix it until we have like some real chunks here. You can use your hands, you can use a spoon. I do like to get like really in there. For, so I can also feel if everything is wet, like everything is covered with some honey. I'll try along with it. And then we're just gonna equally distribute this whole thing. Ooh. We can like use our hands like that. So now we mix everything together. We have like our nice chunks of oats with honey, with coconut oil, with coconut milk, and it's gonna come and go into the oven and bake for 15 minutes until it's like golden brown. 15 minutes. Okay, so we put the granola in the oven for 15 minutes. We're gonna let it sit there, and then meantime, what are we doing? Yes, in the meantime, we're gonna chop up some macadamia nuts. We just need to half them. And then we're gonna put them in the oven too, only for like five to seven minutes, so they get like really roasty and brown. We're just gonna add so much flavor to the granola later on. So I'm just putting these on my cutting board. Be careful when you chop them. And we're just gonna place them on the baking tray and put it in the oven for five to seven minutes. Mm, actually yeah. perfect. So we're ready with the granola. It's yes. nice golden brown. It's exactly what we wanted. And I used two trays for the macadamia nuts and the granola, just because the macadamia nuts only need five minutes, the granola needs about 15 minutes. Okay. So I don't want the to nuts burn. to burn already. So I just used two trays and we have like some really nice chunks here. Yeah, golden. Yes. And we're just gonna take the, the nuts, add them to the granola chunks. And now I'm just gonna add some cinnamon and some my favorite coconut. I like to use a lot. And then we're gonna use also some coconut chips to get like a little bit different kind of consistency Crunch. in them. Crunch. And now I'm just mixing it up. And then you have a perfect granola. This granola, the recipe for this granola is really exclusive sneak peek into my book that is coming out in March. Only on Isle TV, people. Yes, yeah, so cannot find this recipe anywhere else than here and in my book. Right. <laughs> and that's it. Now we're just gonna let it cool off. Then you can like um, put it into glass jars and store it for a few weeks and you have like a perfect, healthy, delicious breakfast ready in Snack, yeah. You could put it in a little plastic bag, put you it in your bag and just exactly. snack That's on That's exactly the point of the things that I do, that it's practical and you saw how easy and quick it was again. again. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, bye. Bye.
Hi everyone, we are in Natalie Gleitman's kitchen of Natalie's Cuisine, here to learn how to make salmon on a bed of veggies. Yes. So, what's the first step? Yes, so <laughs> I'm super happy that you're here, first yes, of all. me too. Um, it's such an amazing recipe. It's, this, it's the recipe that I grew up with. My mom doesn't really like to cook that much or spend that much time in the kitchen, right. so this was like the go-to recipe every Friday. Every Shabbat dinner. Exactly, yes. so this is perfect when I have friends over, a large group of people right. because it doesn't take a lot of time it will take us like 35 minutes to prepare all together with cooking time with prepping wow. time super quick exactly and then it's fun to host yeah. you know what i mean i don't know how you feel but i hate spending all friday at home preparing to just to host people and then you don't want to host right. People, right and then you're just tired and exactly. not in the mood exactly so let's start yes. First of all, we have like some vegetables here. We have carrots, I have zucchini, and I have this celery, root celery. Yes. So I already peeled it. I peeled the carrots and I washed the zucchini. And now we're just gonna go use these graters. It doesn't really matter what size they are. And we're just gonna grate the vegetable into these bowls. Yes, let's, let's do, it. do it. So you have the zucchini, so let's just okay. cut off the end of it. And then you can immediately Great into the form where we're gonna put the salmon also. Amazing. And I'm gonna start with the carrots. Okay, Natalie, so we grated the vegetables. We have them in the pans. Now, what right. is the next step? We are gonna mix it. Okay. All into one. The most amazing part about this recipe is that you can't go wrong here. We're just filling up this casserole dish till wherever we want, like till the top. So there's nothing that can go wrong here. Yeah. I do have the recipe on my blog, nataliescuisine.com, if you wanna have like the exact amount. This is our bed. So we're just gonna add some vegetable broth. Okay, so you're not pouring all of it in? Not yet, because we're gonna keep some for the salmon that we're gonna right. place in a second. We're just gonna like mix it up a little bit, add some salt and pepper. And then we can put the salmon filet Yum. right on top. First, we're gonna put it on the on this side. And then we're gonna turn the salmon around to the pretty side. <laughs> so now we're just gonna add some more vegetable broth. Oof, that looks delicious. On the salmon so everything gets like juicy. Yes, and flavorful. As you can see, I added zero fat to this. Right. No oil, no Nothing. butter, no cream, just vegetables just like very natural ingredients. And now we're gonna put this secret ingredient, which is just a pinch of sherry, like a shot of sherry, a let's shot. say it this way. You can like, it's like individual, you also don't have to add it, but it really adds like some extra flavor. It's like my mom's secret ingredient to this recipe. Yeah. I'm gonna share it exclusively yeah. with ILTV. Exclusively with Flavors, with flavors of Israel. <laughs> I preheated the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now we're gonna place the salmon as it is in the oven for about 25 minutes, half an hour maximum. It really depends on the size of the salmon. Like this one is quite thin slices, so I don't think we need any more than 25 minutes until we can dig in. Ooh, delicious. It smells amazing. It smells so we're good. We're so impatient. We wanted to be finished already. <laughs> I wish I could explain to you the smell that is happening right now. It's so delicious. Nat, this looks delicious. Yes, the fish is ready. Ready. Inside, soft, outside, crunchy. Crispy. Yes. You have to try this. I have to try it. I'm so excited to try this right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. You have to. It is great. Honestly, one of my favorite recipes. You have to make this at home. And it guys. makes you feel like at home with your mom, yes, Shabbat dinner. Exactly. My dad's gonna see this and make me make me make this for him for <laughs> Shabbat dinner tomorrow, so I'm excited. <laughs> oh 
Perfectly cooked salmon. Yeah? Perfectly cooked Good. salmon. And the vegetables You can't mess this up. Even you can't mess this up. <laughs> I can most definitely mess most dishes up, but this is very simple, very easy, yeah. and very delicious. Happy you like it. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>